Good morning, St. Simons. Welcome to our service today. It's great to worship together. We've got a new three-part series starting on two Thessalonians and Cameron will speak to us later in the service. We've also got some live recorded music uh, from some of our congregation as well as prayers. So uh, as we begin our service, let's just start with prayer. Father God, would you open our hearts and our minds to all that you have for us this morning? And we thank you that we can meet together like this and we pray your blessing on our day. Amen. You are the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Didn't want heaven without us so jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire and in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God To the Church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, that it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. 
Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes on that day to glorify to be glorified in, in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. To this end we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and in you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi St. Simons, we are in Second Thessalonians, three-part series beginning today. It's a great book. It's a tiny book. It's easy to miss. It's towards the end of the Bible, but it's well worth reading. And I really pray, and I hope you'll pray as well, that to all of us, it can be a useful thing for a Christian faith as individuals and as a whole church of St. Simon's. Has it ever been said to you that everything in life is training you for what's coming next, what's coming later, and for eternal life as well? Now, that would include things that are really good, where you can say, I've achieved this and that, and I've learned from it, and very difficult situations as well. And there's some people who faced some particularly difficult situations in life, and all of us will at some point, but it's all a preparation, a getting ready for what's to come. Well, the writer to the letter, as it is, of Second Thessalonians is really pleased with those to whom he's writing. And they are the people of the Church of Thessalonica, a little town in Greece, modern day name is Thessalonikai, still exists. And Paul is the man and he had set up a church there two or three years before, we think. We're not sure. Midway through the first century, he was the first person to get to that town to say, Jesus Christ makes a difference. And our church got going. And his letter writing is in response to letters that he's had from them and other messages from people to say how they're doing. But he's continuing the process of educating them and discipling them and encouraging them. And he starts off really commending them. Uh, but he does acknowledge what they're going through. There are three different things that he's writing into. If you read the whole book, you see it right away. The first thing is persecution and trial. So he encourages them there. The second thing is fake news that's been spreading in his name. So he puts that to right. And then lastly, he's still got some time to write into something internal to the church, which is lazy people. Some people were thought to have given up their jobs, thinking, well, if God loves me and he's going to provide for me, then everything will be okay. They get a good, stiff maturity lecture from Paul, and that's towards the end of the book. But I've called today living in God's security, particularly thinking of the trials of the persecutions that they face. And there'll be some things in here that are going to be useful in our own context, different as it is. The first thing that Paul did, does that I want to note is this thing of commending them, of thanking them and saying, well done. Look how he does it. It's in verse three. He says, I thank God for you, for the things I've heard for you. Basically how they've prioritised God in their lives. And that's found its expression in the way they've been treating each other. Others will have looked in from the outside of the church community have seen this and will have wanted to join and get involved. He's thrilled with this. I thank God for you. Now, that is a middle way between puffing up people's ego, saying, you're amazing, you are just great, or not saying anything at all, as some people do. You might have a boss who doesn't say anything at all. 
uh, when you do really well and they're scared that you take it the wrong way, scared that it just puffs you up and makes you full of yourself and maybe not work. And the, there are church leaders like that as well. The middle way is to direct the attention to God, but acknowledge the person, their gift. And Paul does it. I thank God for you. You're an encouragement to me. I'm thanking God for you. That is going to cause the person to live in God's security rather than the power of their own conceit or anything else like that. So that's an important start about living in God's security. But then Paul goes on to acknowledge their persecutions and say how well he thinks they're doing in the face of difficult things that they've got to deal with. If you have lived through coronavirus and been ill yourself, you may have just had mild symptoms, but I know I've spoken to people, even in St. Simon's, for whom, thankfully not many at all, who have had it really bad. And in times like these, you don't half get to know the value of your relationship with God because you can see the body just almost useless. And, you know, people wonder if they're going to die when they get this disease. It's absolutely awful. And it can make you think a lot more about the eternal and about living in God's security. And Paul begins to turn around the thinking to this. He writes about this in other places. He writes about this in Romans chapter 5. There's a famous passage, the first few verses, 1 to 5, are hugely encouraging about persecution, about suffering, leading eventually to character and then on through a few more things to hope, which does not disappoint because God is pouring out his love on us, living in God's security. And then Paul goes on and he says, you're suffering these things. You are counted as worthy of the kingdom of God. Now, to be counted of, of, as worthy of something when you're not actually worthy, but to be counted of it is a huge blessing. That's be a decision that's been made by someone else. If I get into trouble with a loan shark because I've got debts to pay, so I go down a, 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 a silly road and then I get a threatening phone call. I've not earned enough money to pay that off. Perhaps, though, if the day before I've spilled it all out to a friend who's given a huge bank transfer over to my account, I can say to the threatening phone caller, no, I haven't earned the money, but I have the money. <laughs> they don't care how I've got it. They just want the money. The point is I'm counted as being back in credit because of someone else's actions. And boy, am I grateful. And this is demonstrated most powerfully in history by Jesus Christ, whose sacrificial death as God meant that human beings have sins forgiven because he became human and he made a channel from the earth to God for those who acknowledge their sin and acknowledge that Jesus died to save them. We have an automatic relationship and we begin kingdom of God living now it's not for when we die it begins now and on into eternity we are counted as worthy of the kingdom of God Jesus life as we know from the gospels there was suffering in it and Paul saying to you are suffering you are counted as worthy of the kingdom of God by which you entered through knowing Jesus but just think you're counted as worthy of the kingdom because you know this life of suffering it's not just a frothy faith some kind of ideology it's a very important thing he continues now in verse six he writes into what's going to happen first three words are very encouraging god is just and he goes on for the next few verses to say basically there's going to be a reckoning god will give rest and relief to those who've acknowledged them and who've been suffering for him. And there'll be punishment for those who have refused, in effect, to acknowledge him. The word for relief is anesis. Now, we get our words anaesthetic and anodin from anesis, the Greek word. So it can help to understand if you've reached for that bottle of, of for, for these anodin tablets you'll understand exactly wh where this is coming from and it's got a dual meaning and the meaning the two meanings are relief lifting of the burden 
when Jesus comes back, Paul's telling us to wait and to watch and to keep going for that time. The lifting of the pressure from us of suffering and also being fit. The kingdom living of God will take on a new dimension altogether when we are together in God's kingdom and celebrating him forever with no suffering, with no pain, with no more crying or sickness or death and all the things that are spoken of at the beginning of Revelation chapter 21, living in God's security. These things go on and Paul encourages and educates people. And the last thing that I want to say about the passage is we, in verse 10, it talks about God's holy people. This is going to happen on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and be marvelled about, marvelled at among those who believe. And it talks about things coming to fruition. And God emphasises to us through this book, I think, that there's a plan about us coming to our very best through living in Jesus Christ, through living as believers in Jesus and being able to be good family members, even when we may have a difficult family to live in sometimes, being good workers in a good or a difficult workplace and in many other contexts, contexts where God's glory is seen in us by others who may not have any plans to acknowledge that or know what it is, but God's glory is seen in us but we are also at our very best and we come into being that is living in God's security shall we pray heavenly father we thank you for second thessalonians and we pray that you would teach us about practical living while we take on the enormous dimension of what's to come after this world in jesus name Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we want to say sorry that we haven't acknowledged you as creator of all things. The earth is yours and everything in it. Please forgive us for forgetting that in the midst of this pandemic that you are greater in everything that we can ever do. Help us to draw near to you. Give us clean hands and a pure heart and wisdom and right living in all that we do and are. In your name we pray. Amen. We pray for our Chancellor as he grapples with the hugely complicated task of supporting our economy in a fair and sustainable way and that he will be sure-footed and far and far-sighted in the process. We are thankful for the measures just announced and pray that employers will be encouraged to retain staff and employ youth, our youth, in significant numbers. In your name we pray. Amen. We pray for the vulnerable. Let us remember victims of domestic violence, a situation made worse during the lockdown. We pray for the bill going through the committee stage in Parliament, that all concerns will be addressed and that it will be fully funded. In your name we pray. Amen. We pray for the children of prisoners, conservatively estimated at 300,000 in any, any year, that their needs will be addressed. Right now, they can't visit an imprisoned parent, thereby increasing their sense of isolation and abandonment. Generally, society forgets about them and their short and long-term mental health needs. We lift them to you, Father. Amen. We thank you for our church family. We pray that we will soon be able to worship together in person. Please continue to guard and protect us. Help us to adjust our thinking about how we relate to others in a Jesus-centred way. We are mindful of the Black Lives Matter debate and the ever-widening debate between the haves and have-nots in our community. Heavenly Father, please help us. Amen. God of all wisdom and might, 
please guide our government in its negotiations about our future relationship with the European Union, our nearest and largest trading partner. We pray for fair and workable agree agreements about trade, justice and immigration and other important matters to be reached. We are greatly concerned of a seeming lack of progress and what this means as the dread deadline draws ever closer. In your name, please guide them. Amen. Lord, thank you for the crucial work of our National Cyber Security Centre responsible for protecting our infrastructure, financial and other data and communications against threats from hostile na uh, nation states, criminal organisations and malicious individuals. We ask for wisdom for the Prime Minister about the decision whether to um, continue with Huawei in the 5G network. In your name we pray. Amen. Father God of mercy and grace, we pray for countries around the world still reeling from the effects of coronavirus on people's health, livelihoods, mental and social well-being. Please guide governments as they try to stabilise the economy and social fabric of their country. Amen. Finally, thank you, Father, for sending Jesus as our example and saviour. Amen. you enjoyed the service today St Simon's it's great to worship together uh, just to say that there are more songs uh, on the YouTube channel if you want to um, click on the links below if you want to continue to worship there'll also be an eight o'clock prayer meeting every day this week and the email will be sent to you with the zoom links from the church office um, so as we close now let's just pray together Father, thank you for this way that we can worship together. Thank you for our time as a church family. And we ask your blessing on each and every one of us and those we love for the week ahead. Amen.